Hi, Peter. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. I'm a little tired, but uh, I am I am hanging in there, and this is actually the perfect timing for us to be doing this because I have nothing to do for 14 days. There you go, quarantine. So you, <laughs> yes. you've got 14, 14 days of surviving. All right. Well, thank you very much for your time. Of course, uh, man. Yeah, like, you, like you said, good timing. Mm. And uh, so, so why, why are you back in Australia for? We were just talking I've, about Olympics. Yeah, I've come back here to be the pitching coach. I've, I've transitioned into a coaching role with the Melbourne Aces, um, yes. a place where we won the championship last year and we're trying to repeat again this year. Um, but it's a, it's a little bit different for me, uh, only being strictly a coach for the first time. Yes. Um, so uh, I've spent I spent majority of this year sort of cluing myself up and trying to to learn the, the, the new the new pitching coach's role in the game with the, the introduction of analytics and, and all that sort of stuff and, and the information that's out there right now on at, at all levels um, is just mind boggling. So trying to wrap my head around that the new age of, of how to coach and, and so obviously bring a little bit of what I've I've experienced myself as well. And do you miss picking up the ball? You're gonna get that urge to like, you know, come on one more season? I don't. I don't know. I don't. Um, I don't. It, it would actually. It will all depend on how. I haven't picked up a baseball since March. So, uh, <laughs> right. in all honesty, it'll it'll depend on what it feels like when I when I pick up that ball for the first time. I know they're going to want me to throw throw BP at some yeah. stage this year. So I'm going to get some work <laughs> in. Uh, but yeah, I th I think I'm well and truly done playing. Yeah. All right. Fair I, I might hit. Well, I might hit though. That might oh, there be, you go. That might be my future. Is if I maybe maybe I can come, come back on as a first pinch hitter. <laughs> 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 maybe. <laughs> well, and uh, tell us how how are you doing in this time? You know, uh, especially with the US, how you know it, it's a, a bit more drastic over there than it is here in Australia. So, yeah, um, how how are you or your family sort of adapted in this period? It's been it's been such a, a strange year for everyone and for for all involved in the states uh i'm lucky enough where i, I mean I, as you know i retired in 2018 and i've done a little bit of tv work since then um but you know i i haven't necessarily needed to go anywhere so it's been fine for me um i'm a little uh not worried but uh, frustrated that my daughter was supposed to start school this year Right. Uh, in in person school, so this would have been grade one for her, which obviously is a, a huge part of every kid's development. Yes. Um, but we're we're managing to to do the online schooling thing, um, and it's it's worked out pretty good so far. Um, there are still places in Atlanta where I'm from that are doing in person schooling. Um, yeah. But we just I'm just not ready to to send her in there as, as much as I think she'd be fine. Um, we have my mother-in-law living with us in the States who's older and um, there's not enough information out there for people with asthmatic. Uh, I'm asthmatic, so right. um, I, I, you know, it's just, you just, I'm just trying to be careful. You know, I'd hate to, to lean on the side of, uh, don't worry about it, and then all of a sudden I get sick and, and you yeah, know, that's the last thing I want. So, which I'm sure is the last thing everything wants, everybody wants, but it's just been, it's just been one thing after another over there. And now, and now the election turmoil is happening. <laughs> so it's just, it's just crazy, man. If if you, if you were to say that this was going to happen two years ago, I would never have believed that that it would be impossible. But I guess Trump getting into office in the first place was was a, a miracle, and and now, <laughs> and now he's not going to leave. So <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, I, I don't know. He's taking it happen. to the Supreme Court, isn't he, or right, something? Yeah. Oh, who, who knows, mate? Like, it's a different story every day. You don't know who to believe. You don't know where to turn to that's information right. anymore. It's just like you just. Yeah. I, I've I've resigned to the fact that I found a, a few people online that I can trust, um, and I trust their opinion because they're not swayed one way or the other is politically or religiously or any way. They yeah. just they just sit in the middle of most conversations and they can they can look at it subjectively and go, okay, well this doesn't make sense and, and they're the kind of people that I try to try to magnate to myself. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So let's talk about uh, you know, the major league baseball and how they sort of uh, they dealt with this at this time, you know. Um, we didn't even know if there was going to be a season. Right. Um, you know, so they uh, delayed it. Uh, was it two months, three months? Yeah, yep. Yeah. It was. Uh, yeah. The first game was in June. June, 
June, end of June, I think the first game was. So, um, in your opinion, so in your opinion, how, how do you think they dealt with this? Because uh, I, I thought it was great. I'm with you, mate. I, I honestly, at the end of the season, at the start of the season, I'm like, what are they thinking? You know, this isn't yes. going to work. And then the thing with the Marlins came down and, and, and yes. you know, it was all looking like it wasn't going to happen. And then uh, to MLB's credit, they managed to get through a 60-game season and, and we got ourselves a world champ. And uh, the teams that maybe should have been there made the playoffs. The extended playoffs was interesting. Um, the the DH rule across all of all leagues mm. was very interesting. The extended uh, rosters was, you know, I felt like this year was a year for for MLB and Rob Manfred to really trial some stuff that they were maybe thinking of implementing in the next few years. So yes. um, I, I think it's been good for the game. Uh, now, do I hope we get a full season next year? One hundred percent, because Absolutely. sixty games isn't really enough to determine a world champion. Um, That's right. So. I would like to see the season go back to normal, but I'd like to see some of the new rules implemented too. I, I yeah, like absolutely. the DH. I like the DH yes. a lot. Um, and the three batter minimum rule, you can, you can um, for those that aren't baseball fans, yes. basically you could bring a pitcher in to face one batter for the history of the game. And then all of a sudden this year, they decided <laughs> to change it that every pitcher who comes into the game has to face at least three hitters unless they finish the inning and then they can face as many as they did. So yeah. um, funny thing is, I don't know that I would have had a career that I had, had <laughs> <That's> been, <right. laughs> because yes. I led the league in, in one or two batter appearances for a right-handed pitcher <laughs> from my length of my career. So yes. uh, I'm glad they timed it when they did. <laughs> Otherwise, <laughs> I wouldn't be sitting here right now. You have to go into like a, like, you know, yeah. Very, I'd have to very interesting. Face a, a, a lot of left-handed hitters, which wouldn't have been good for my career. That's right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree. I thought the the DH rule was good, um, mm. and that's going to um, make some careers go a little bit longer. You know, it's going to take as, some careers as away too. Yeah. So, um, and and it doesn't give it puts more pressure on the pitchers. So you know, mm -hmm. I think I think it, it works all right. So, let's talk about the Braves now. Uh, okay. The Braves season. We've had some, we had some pretty nasty injuries at the start with uh, Secura going down, uh, a main pitcher. But uh, Anderson uh, oh. came out of nowhere and uh, pitched amazing, uh, really good. Freed as well. And also another question, um, you know, tell us, in your opinion, how, how you think we went. We are up 3-1 against the Dodgers and it's like, here we go. Well, the series time, a couple of, yeah. <laughs> uh, couple of base I, I, running uh, decisions couple. that yeah, turned the sort of game. Yep, a couple of baseball, base run decisions, a couple of pitching decisions. Um, yes. I think um, given, given, you know, if they had a chance to do it over, I think they probably would have just tried to finish game two quickly rather than allowing the Dodgers to come back the way they did in game two. I don't know if you remember, we were up eight to two or eight to one or eight to three, whatever it was, we're up by a lot. And instead of going with one of the three or four guys that, that were shut down relievers all year, uh, mm -hmm. we tried to sneak through that inning with one of our guys and save the other guys. And the Dodgers yes. ended up scoring and getting it to within one run, nice. which yes. they also didn't look like they were going to hit the side of a boat for the first two games <laughs> until that inning too. So, there are so many factors that went into that that you know with a three one lead despite that happening, yeah. you'd think we're in a pretty good situation. Um, but unfortunately, this year wasn't the year, and I don't, uh, I can't say that I don't think that they would have won if they went to the World Series. But I just, I just know that you're a chance if you're there. That's and, right. Um, so I know a lot of Braves fans were frustrated, but at the same time, I also read a lot of comments that said, you know, this to do what we did this year, losing oh. the pitching that we did, you look at the starting rotation, what it was supposed to be at the start of the year yeah. compared to what it was, yes. and it was a completely, it was a complete, excuse my French, shit show. Um, yeah, right. So, so uh, for them to, to, to do what they did, and Ian Anderson stepping up the way he did, and, and, uh, and Bryce Wilson in the playoffs as well, Yes. Um, you know, these young guys that are going to be around for, for a while, um, certainly getting their feet wet in playoffs this year sets them up perfectly for, for next year. Yeah, 
Absolutely. There's a bright future ahead. Freddie mm. Friedman won the MVP as well. So yeah. he's got a he's still got he's still got a and the the, the bat the batting lineup is just powerful all the way through that lineup. So um my next question is yeah. uh, do they do they sign Azuna? Uh, the next I don't year. know if it's going to be uh, like the Donaldson situation. I think they hit the jackpot with Josh Donaldson, and I think they hit yes. the jackpot with Azuna. Unfortunately, they hit the jackpot so well that other teams are going to give them three or four year deals, and the Braves That's aren't. Right. The Braves just aren't willing to 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 yeah. give that kind of money right now. Um, the game's trending younger, but there are still teams that will pay for older guys like an Azuna who had the year that he had. So yeah. I I think the intention would be there to sign him. Uh, I yep. just don't know if the funds um, would be yeah. there. So, um, and I know, just, and I know with how have... the year went too. Like every, yeah. Everybody lost money this year. So, yeah. you know, teams are particularly cheap going to the off season. Um, I don't know it. if you've noticed with some of the transactions that have been going on, um, a lot of guys that didn't get their options picked up that maybe would have in years past. Um, and I think that's just a direct result of teams not having any fans in the stands and, and basically yeah, just right. hemorrhaging money all year. Yeah, um, absolutely. I say that MLB is still going to be okay. I don't want anybody to think that that you know MLB is going to get all of a sudden f- fall away. They're going to be just fine. Um, yeah. But yeah, as a as a as a business that just made billions and billions of dollars year after year, last year was a bit of kicking the kicking the balls. Definitely, definitely, yeah. And, and I saw that uh, you know I'm in some of the Braves on Facebook, the chat groups, and they said that the ratings. Uh, once the Braves uh, got knocked out of the finals, was you know uh, th- there was more watching uh, the NFL than there was Major League Baseball for the World right. Series. So um, very interesting to see you know who's watching and just be careful because that could be the all the Braves fans who are out the big that football could be fans as well, anyway. Yeah, that's right. Because don't worry, when when I when we were at Turner Field, you could definitely notice when football season started. Because it, it sort of coincided with going back to school as well. So you'd see just the crowds go like that. And then all of a sudden, just football season starts. And it's like, nope, see you later. But there's school yeah. football. There's high, there's high school football, college football. There's so many there's so many things that you're competing with over here that, that a, lot of, a lot of people just don't understand. It's just, uh, it's, it's a week, week in, week out. There is just so much sport from a Thursday to a Sunday that it's, it's, it's insane. You can literally sit on the couch and not move from... Yeah. For four days, yeah, and we get it all in Australia as well on ESPN. So right, um, there you go. You, know, you can turn it on, and there's so many options. So. Yeah, <laughs> and then you got the Australian sports as well. So exactly. rugby league is still going, and now I cricket's the, gonna start. So. I saw they had the state of the state of origin the other day. Ah, oh, Queenslanders, yes. eh? Yeah, Queensland. <laughs> they, they they said it was the worst team in history, and then they beat it. <laughs> Good. So Lord. there you go. So. Uh, yeah, um, and the future for Atlanta is looking very, very bright for the next yeah, couple of years, right? I would, I would not be surprised if we see Freddie Freeman get extended this this off season, um, yeah, despite yeah. the despite the money troubles. Yeah, because if they don't, he's going to go somewhere and get get paid a lot of money. Um, and yes. I know that that he's made it apparent that he wants to stay in Atlanta. He loves it here in Atlanta. He wants to be a one team guy, just like Chipper was. Chipper yes. was his idol. He grew up playing with Chip. He grew up looking up to Chipper. So um, he wants to he wants to do the same thing that he did and be with one team for his whole career. Um, but then, yeah, you look at the young pitching that they have. Uh, the the organization has been been a pitching organization as long as you can remember. Obviously, back to the '90s with Glavin, Maddox, and Smoltz and, and all yes. the rest of the guys. So um, it's an organization that prides itself on on being able to develop young pitching. And I think we're going to see we're going to see some. I mean, Freed was amazing this year. As you mentioned earlier, um, but you know he he finished top five in the Cy Young. This is this is a guy that was going to yeah, be our right. number three. This is he's supposed to be our number yeah. three this year. So yes. for him to take that that kind of leap and bound, um, I I just I just think the future is very very bright in Atlanta. As long as long as they the offense can keep up, we've got Albies and Acuna for the next eight years yes. at, at really not not a lot of money. Um, Austin Riley. Um, you know, it's there's just there's Power. just talent all over the place, yeah. yeah. And there's Power more, is. there's more coming too. Yes, yes, absolutely. Very bright. That's good to see, my Braves. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
So, so let's get let's get back into into your career. So, okay. uh, for the for international listeners, uh, it says here that you were born in Attadale, Perth. Is that correct? Yeah, correct. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Um, my first question is like, was your dad or were your family involved in baseball in Perth? My dad actually started playing at the age of thirty. Um, right. But. He, he, he came to the U.S. Uh, on a business trip and saw a game at the Astrodome and oh. fell, in, fell in love with the game at the Astrodome. Um, and then we went and found a t-ball uh, club in Willerton, Perth. Right. Uh, and then I played, I played there for my juniors. And then I went to South Perth for my junior baseball. And then um, I, I was never really that – I never made a until under-18s. Um, and oh. then the first state team that I made, I, I got signed with the Twins out of that tournament. So oh. um, it was right place, the right time, and and uh, yeah. But it was just it was just a, I, had, I had to make a decision too when I was fifteen to decide whether to play AFL football or or or, or baseball. And I oh. I thought initially I'd made the mistake because I only got a couple of years my first time over in the states. But um, obviously sticking to it and getting lucky enough to get a second chance at it um, proved to be the right decision. So what was the, uh, the level of baseball uh, in Perth, you know, w when you were growing up there and playing baseball? Was it competitive? Yeah. Uh, obviously, you, um, you had Minnesota Twin Scouts yeah. down there. So obviously, you know, they're not going to come down for no reason. So right. obviously, they're, they're scouting for good talent. So... Tell us a little bit about, you know, the competition there. Uh, it's all the national championships. So under 14s, under 16s, and under 18s national championships. And it's, it's a, yes. they're usually over two weeks in January. And the beauty of that is, is that clubs can send out representatives for, for basically a month and they can see all the talent there is in Australia and they can see what they wanted to sign. Um, and the yes. beauty about here also is that we don't get a lot of travel ball or we don't play a lot of baseball. There's no high school baseball in Australia, really. Um, so when you look at what the the kids in the US do, and even the kids in, in South and Central America, when, when yes. all they do is play baseball. So baseball. Yes. We, are, we are technically infantile in our development at the time we're gonna sign. So as a scout, they've got to look at me as a player and go, okay, what do I think he could be? Not just based on what he's doing right now, but with his body type and, and, and exposure yes. to playing catch every day and, and getting around guys that, that know what they're doing. So um, there are there have been a lot of guys that have signed out of Australia uh, from those tournaments and yes. um, will continue to. Um, and I think there was a time, you talk about baseball in Perth, there was a time when I thought the Perth Heat was the big leagues. Yes. <laughs> I, I looked up to those guys that played on the Perth Heat like they were big leaguers. And um, yes. that was that was something that, that fueled my love of the game, was seeing those guys play. And, and, uh, and I think um, – I hope the popularity can get back to – I know that we had, we had a popular season last year in the ABL. Um, yes. But I think the more, the more people like me get to come home and tell my story – um, the more exposure the game's going to get too. Uh, I'm still yes. relatively unknown in Australia. Amongst the yes. baseball community, people know who I am. But outside yes. of that, I can walk down the street and people just think that I'm some dude with tattoos all up and down his arms. So <laughs> right. um, it's, it's, it's good. But at the same time, I'd like, I'd like the game to get more exposure in this country. Yes. So when, when you were talking about that, is that like the, so like the same era, era with like Graham Lloyd and Dave Nelson, that, that, that sort of era? Yeah, that was so. Um, that was exactly what I'm talking about. So the early '90s, yeah. when when the, the ABL was kicking, we had the the Dakio Dolphins up in Brisbane. Um, yes. We had the Gold Coast Cougars up in Queensland as well. We had the Storm. You know, it, it was a good competition, and we get good talent sent out from the good talent sent out from the states. But yeah, it's well, Peter, Peter, sorry, sorry, Peter. I can no, remember. Um, I can remember when uh, being from Newcastle, we actually had the Hunter Hunter Eagles, Eagles. Man, as I part of it. Hey, there you go. And um, I can remember catching a, a like I was a little kid in the outfield, and I caught the Dave Nelson home run, and I was like, "Yeah, you know, you're not going to stop me." So, yeah, I, I do you remember how fun that used to be? 
Yeah, so much fun. Right. Yeah. And they had such a good atmosphere in, in, in Western Australia. There was, a, uh, I don't know if you remember Parry Field. It was no. a field that they played at and it was turf and it was oh. built specifically for baseball. So it was a baseball oh. field. Whereas in Sydney and, and Queensland, it was usually uh, rugby league fields that they sort of manipulated to turn into a yes. baseball field. So um, to get a true baseball feeling at Parry Field, they had the big hill uh, around the outside of the home run, so everybody would – and I'm talking two packed grandstands on, on the first and third base sides, full grandstand in the back, and the hill completely decked out with people most Friday and Saturday nights in Perth. It was, it was such a cool experience. And we used to do part – of, part of our state team thing was when I first made my state team is we'd do car parking. So the Perth Heat would say – go out there with your parents and you'd collect a gold coin from people coming into the game as a donation for the state team. So right. those sort of things, those sort of things that you just don't hear about these, I'm sure there are still things like that around, but you know, that was a huge reason why I could go on those trips because they weren't cheap. They were three, three, three and a half thousand dollars every time you had to go on one of these trips. And, yes. and I was just living with my mom, so she couldn't afford to send me. So if it wasn't for those initiatives by the Perth heat, I, I, I don't think I would have been able to go. Yeah, exactly. And I can remember those those state teams with high school and uh, you know getting billeted uh, yes. by, by like a, like a pet, <laughs> like a pet, like a, another a family. Yeah. And like I remember one time in Sydney, we we stayed at the in like this granny flat, you know, right. and we just had the rooms to ourselves, like the full guys in the, in the rooms. So, yes, it was very dangerous. So getting prepared for the game. It's like, okay, Craig, you're pitching at 9 a.m. tomorrow. And I was like, oh, damn. Jeez, All right. <laughs> yes. I remember getting billeted. I, got, I went to Cairns for a schoolboys trip and we got we got billeted up there. Yeah. That, it's good. That, that's cool, though, because, I mean, it's it's obviously saved you a lot of expenses of having to try and get a hotel. You, you find these families that, that obviously hopefully get a police check, but, I mean, uh, you find these families that are willing to accept these teenage kids and, and – Put up with a lot of shit for a week, and uh, yeah. and yeah, without them, I, I don't know where we'd be either. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let's talk about signing with the Minnesota Twins. I mean, uh, you know, just looking at your career and, and just hearing some of your previous interviews, it seemed to me as if you didn't really take it for granted the first time. Oh, Is I wasn't that a fair, ready. Fair yeah, call? I wasn't. I wasn't ready. I wasn't mature enough to to leave home and go and be on my own, making my own decisions, um, poor ones all the time at that age. Yes. I, mean, I, was, I was 17 and I'd just been dropped into a country uh, where I talked funny. I was making $123 every two weeks and I was living <laughs> in a hotel. I was living in a hotel and had to be at the baseball field every morning at 8 o'clock. And to me, yeah. having left high school, going to the baseball field at 8 o'clock every morning was, was the worst thing in the world. I'd never worked a real job, so I didn't know what right. real work was. Um, and I, I just squandered that opportunity by thinking that it was too hard. I just – it's like it wasn't as – I didn't see it as the opportunity that it was. I was just – I thought, saw it as, as work and I saw it as chore and I, and I saw it as, as too – put it in the too hard basket, uh, which I did I think, a, lo a lot of things at that age. Yeah, and I think for a lot of people – like um coming into that like minnesota twins like you're probably like the standout player here in australia but all of a sudden you get thrown into you know the minor league system in the minnesota and you you know you back down to where you sort of started right the first the first bp session that i saw professional guys take shocked me like you haven't to my core the mm -hmm. sound that these guys bats and they're all swinging wood bats i was used to tin yes. bats i was used to aluminum bats right. aluminium bats so I'm hearing these guys and they're just making these ungodly sounds and the ball is firing off the bats. And I'm like, okay, I'm overmatched. And it took me, it took me, I, I've got that personality where uh, I was able to gel in the clubhouse well, but I didn't play well on the field at all. Um, yeah. I struggled, I struggled mightily my, my first, my first year. And, and I guess that was the adjustment of being away from home. Um, yeah. I finally got it together second half of my second year in the states and then um i an injury shocker an injury uh caused me to to lose the the rest of the season and then came back the next year for spring training and and i just wasn't prepared and didn't work hard enough in the off season i think i was actually back then i had to get a job in the off season so i was trying to juggle right. a job and and getting ready for the season so i just i just didn't commit to it like i should have and like 
it, it's strange. It's not strange, but it, it's 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 weird seeing guys that sign at sixteen and seventeen. Yes. Be able to to just do that from such a young age and get to the big leagues at twenty one or get to the big leagues at twenty two. And yes. it's not like a like a like a Ronald Acuna who's who was eighteen and, and a superstar and nineteen and was always going to go to the big leagues. You know, it was these guys who who sign at such a young age and maybe don't have that kind of talent and are able to work and get themselves to the big leagues at such an early age. That's what's impressive. I I, I just yes. didn't have the I didn't have the 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 mindset as a immature seventeen year old to be able to do that. Yes, but I I think that you're not the only one <laughs> that, that's, that's right. gone in and 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 done that. So and, and the other thing too, you you're saying about uh, what did Ronald Acuna sign for uh, last year? Hundred million. Hundred million. <laughs> yeah, cheap bargain. Yeah, cheap. Yeah, that's that's yeah. a bargain. Uh, the, if he had to wait until the end of this year, he might have got two hundred. Wow. Jeez. Look that's at crazy. I, I tell you, the one to gauge it on is Juan Soto. Look what Juan Soto does. Because yeah. they're very similar numbers wise, very similar players, and Juan Soto hasn't signed a deal yet. And Mike Rizzo, the general manager of the Nationals, came out last year and said publicly that they don't think they can afford him. Wow. This that's is a team that's given two hundred million dollars to, to Strasbourg, given Scherzer yeah. money, given Jason Worth money back in the day, given Zimmerman money, given like all these guys have been paid and they don't think they can afford Rondo. I don't uh, Juan Soto. Yeah. Sorry, speaking of that, um, the, one of the big trade rumors about with the Braves, sorry, get back to the Braves, is uh, Bauer. Um, what do you think what do, what do you think our chances are of signing Bauer uh, to the Braves? Or do you think we need him, actually, with, with what we've got? Oh, we need him. You can, yes. it's, a, it's just our young winner. How do you not, yeah. how do you, That's you, plonk, right. you, you plonk him in anywhere and, yeah. and you, you needed him. Yeah. Um, yes. Funny you bring him up, right? So, there's a story of the changing game that is Major League Baseball. When he first came up, everything that he did was seen as so foreign and so new and so horrible. And he was he was ridiculed for what yes. he did. Yes. I don't know. The turnaround that he's been able to make and, and the confidence that he has in himself to say, well, this is how I'm going to do it. And he got traded yes. because he wouldn't change. He got yeah, traded from the Diamondbacks because he wouldn't change the way he did things to the Indians. And yeah. he's now yeah. stuck to it. He's stuck to what he knew. He's stuck to what he believed in. And now driveline is a force in Major League Baseball, which yeah. he he helped. I, I don't know if he helped develop it, but he's very, very, very involved. Yeah. And he was unhittable this season. Wow. Unhit I only saw a couple of his games, but wow, the, the game against the Braves was just, whew, That's the tick. That's the technology um, aspect that's come into the game too. He, he went away a couple of years ago and he said that he wanted to develop a changer. So he'd get on, he'd get on a slow motion camera and he watched uh, other people's change ups that were good ones and how, what their wrist did at release and, and, you know, studied and studied and studied. He actually has his own YouTube channel yeah. where he breaks down lessons. Um, really? So I'm actually going to, I'm going to read them during, I listen to them during quarantine and, and see what I can pick up. But, yeah, he's so passionate about pitching and, and he, he's so good and he wants to get better and he wants to compete. And I think now that Very he's got loose. the freedom, he's got the freedom to do what he wants now. Yeah. Like it, he's not yeah. getting judged. He's not getting criticized. And he's basically just given a middle finger to anybody that doubted him in the past. That's right. And I think he'd fit in real good with the Braves too, like that young team as well. He, he's just yeah. got that, uh, his own way of warming up and, you know, doing these things. But, you know, you need that in the, in a team like that, you know, when you travel with them, with them every day. So um, The kids call it swagger. Yeah. You, you, you'll get it. There you go. You, you, you'll be all right. You'll be... <laughs> So Minnesota, so Minnesota let, let you go uh, uh, after you had two years. So mm -hmm. um, I do believe that you didn't stay in the US. You come back to Australia, right? I did. Yeah. I went to Sydney. Yes. Came to Sydney. Uh, and um, my mum had moved from Perth to Sydney in, since I went to the States. Uh, yes. So that was an easy decision to just come and move in with mum. And then... Played club ball in Sydney for, for a while and then met my first wife. Um, she got a transfer with her work down in Melbourne. So then mm -hmm. I went down to Melbourne and, and I've basically lived in lived in Melbourne ever since. 
And you were playing like a local ball, like like mm-hmm. uh, in Sydney. But was this the actual Caxton Shield uh, you were playing as well? Or I I did have a run with the Storm, but it, it was so good that I have really no memory of it. I don't think I pitched that much, <laughs> and I wasn't I wasn't very I wasn't very good back then. So uh, I I do I've seen photos of myself in a Storm uniform, so I know I did play with the Storm. Right, um, but uh, I. I I started with the Perth Heat, played a couple of games with the Storm, and, and now I guess you can call me a Melbourne ace. Right. So um, during this period, you had to work full time. So it was like, was the dream of going back and playing Major League Baseball even in your thought at that time? No. Guys yeah. didn't get a second chance back then. It was um, once you'd once you'd been released, that was pretty much it. Unless you were a big prospect guy, like uh, unless you were a high yes. draft pick or there's a lot of upside to you and someone else has already given you a lot of money. So for you, it was just a cheap bet. Um, I wasn't that, I wasn't that case. I didn't give any clubs, any other reason or any reasons to want to pursue me as a player. Um, So I had thought that I'd completely screwed up any chance that I had to make the big leagues and came home and, and decided to get on with life and get, get a couple of real jobs and try to eventually landed in sales um, which worked out okay, and and um, landed a few jobs in in Melbourne in sales, and and uh, right. <laughs> was actually doing that. I was a pharmaceutical rep uh, when I came and pitched for Australia in the World Baseball Classic. Well, there you go. Um, yeah. So so what was so what was your what was your goals? What were your motivations at this time? To you know, we we know the story how it ends, but you right, know, right. At, that, at that at that time, what was your motivation to to get back in and playing baseball? I was just playing because I loved the game. I played, yes. I played and coached at club level, winter and summer, for every year that I'd been back. Um, I, I still, I still absolutely loved competing, um, and there was never any a thought that it was going to go anywhere. I was just doing it because I loved it. Um, yes. And so while I was coaching, uh, one of the teams we needed some pitching help. I'd stopped pitching for a couple of years because I had back surgery. Right. Uh, and we needed some pitching on this team, and I'd been playing first base and hitting without any issues with my back. So I decided in the outfield one day with two two of my mates, David and Andrew Tierney, their brothers, were in the outfield, and I'm playing catch with these guys, and I'm throwing from my side arm angle, and they're yes. like, "Dude, it's it's coming out really good. It's coming out really good." So I jumped on the mound and threw a couple of bullpens, and then eventually got into a game, and I was pitching at club ball. And guys weren't even fouling stuff off. So I was like, okay, maybe I've got something here. Not again, not thinking maybe it'll be something for the Clax and Shield. That was my that was my you know ceiling. Yeah. Um, so I went and pitched in the Clax and Shield that next year, and the radar gun was blowing up all over the place and, and people started yeah, to take people started to take real notice. That was in January. We had John Diebel, the Australian uh, coach at the time, uh, said to me that he's going to put me on the squad for the 60-man squad for the World Baseball Classic. And we had a few lead-up games against a team from Japan and a team from Taiwan. Pitched in those games, had a bit of success, actually was yeah. going to get an offer to go to Japan. Um, and then I came over to the States, pitched in uh, the World Baseball Classic. Next day, the Braves, which was in Orlando, where the Braves had their spring training. Right. Uh, next, next day, uh, Dayton Moore and JJ Piccolo came over and walked me around the facility and said, "We'd really like you to come and, and give this thing another chance." Wow, that, that's <laughs> that, that's amazing. <laughs> that was two thousand and six. Yeah. So with two thousand and six, like, um, like, wh- how were you? What were you throwing? Like, uh, like to, for for John Debel to come up a year, you must have been throwing like you know. Early nineties, mid nineties, yeah. fastball. It was yeah. it was low low to mid nineties. Um, mm. from from that arm angle, which wasn't really seen back then. Uh, so who, who, who actually who actually was it you that uh, started yeah. doing the side arm? Man, yeah, just because of my back. Right, and the other thing was, um, like, were you starting uh, as a no, pitcher, no. Or, or were you coming no. out of the bullpen at that stage? Yeah. I, even for the Claxton Shield team, the Victorian team, I'd play first base for eight innings and then I'd run up the line, get a few throws in and come out on the pitch. Right. So yeah. it, was, it, it, was such a, it was such a fun time um, because you don't see that kind of velocity in Australia. Yes. So for me, it was like, not to sound like an asshole, but I knew that I was better than everyone. 
yes. when I was on the mound. I knew that I could get anybody out and everybody around knew it. I was throwing 95 yeah. miles an hour. Guys didn't do that <laughs> in Australia. Yeah. And I was throwing from an arm angle that was down here. So guys didn't see that either. So I had, yes. I had the double whammy uh, in that Claxton Shield and I just I felt invincible. And yes. that feeling carried over to that even my first spring training game. Bobby Cox is my manager. Mm, I'm wow. in my first – I've been called over from the minor league side to pitch in a major league game, spring training game, so that Bobby Cox can see what I've got. Wow. I knew it all beforehand. There was no secrets. I knew what was going on. So I'm, I'm, I'm having to go over there and, and, and pitch it. I was, it was against the Dodgers in Vero Beach. Wow. And, uh, yeah, so I, I threw a couple of innings during the spring training, and, and he obviously liked what he saw. I didn't make the team out of spring training, went to AAA, and was there for one week. And then I got called up. And 2006 was like, I was up and down. I was up and down, AAA in the big leagues. Yes. And um, I'll tell you one more quick funny story about September call-ups, right? Normally on September 1st, they call up the bunch of guys that they're going to come up to the big leagues from the minor leagues and they get to spend a month in the big leagues. I was in Charlotte and I had my flight booked for the 3rd of, 3rd of September to come back to Australia because the, the minor league season finished on the 1st. They had two rainouts in Philadelphia on the 2nd of September and they needed to play four games in two days and they needed pitching help. I was the last guy on the 40-man roster on the list that wasn't, hadn't been called up yet. I get called up. I have a little bit of success in that September and I honestly think that that's the only reason why I had the career that I did. That's the only reason I think they invited me back the next year is because of that success that I had just purely by chance that they had two rainouts in Philadelphia in September. Wow. So oh, the odds. <laughs> you want to talk about the stars aligning from yeah. from October 2005 right the way to now? I mean, I, I'm, I cannot even think about how lucky I have been to this point. Yeah. And, and then all of a sudden, you've had that experience before. It didn't work. So, mm. you know, obviously a second chance. You, you're not going to let this one go this time, right? Exactly. It falls to yeah. the wall for this one. Yeah. Yeah. And then I guess like uh, with the Atlanta Braves like farm system and the management and like Bobby Cox there, you know, friends at that time, you know, uh, you would have had people to go, hey, you know, what am I doing wrong? I mean, what, what was that experience like going up to all these people, these stars that it was you know? the initial shock was pretty cool. Um, yes. You there's the whole shock of hey, you're going to the big leagues. This is everything that you've ever dreamed about in your life. That's one thing. Showing, mm. rocking up to the stadium, seeing the sheer size of, you know, you've seen the MCG and, and they're obviously massive, but I'm entering yep. the inner sanctum of these stadiums now. I'm not just walking around the, the outside. Yeah. So um, that was cool. First time stepping out onto the big league field was, was incredible. Um, but walking into that clubhouse and seeing the names on the nameplates and, and having to introduce myself to these people as if I'm just like, I'm now one of you, like, yes. no, that didn't work. Um, I also was 27 years old, so I wasn't necessarily a young kid. So, yeah. um, and back in the day, they used to treat rookies a little differently than they do now. It was more, <laughs> more of a, it was more of an earn your stripes kind of attitude. Yes. Um, yes. So, uh, and I, I can be... I can be outspoken. I can be uh, – my personality, as I said before, is, is outgoing and I can rub people the wrong way. And, and I did that early with my uh, refusal to accept the rookiness of myself, <laughs> I guess you could put it. Um, but eventually I was able to turn, turn everyone around and, and, uh, and they, they finally accepted me. That's amazing. And then away you went and then away that second opportunity – uh, you can, you know, people can go and look at the stats at the moment. You, you, the, the next couple of seasons, um, very, very impressive, uh, very low ERA. You know, uh, the, I, I read one season you had the most appearances uh, for one season um, out of the Atlanta bullpen. So tell us about that. But like the most appearances, of, uh, like 70, 80 out of 160. Yeah. That's yeah, just was... insane. It was insane. And it was, again, I talked about that feeling going into that Claxton Shield of invinci invincibility almost, um, knowing that I was better than everyone. There was a stage in 2007, not so much 2006, my rookie year, but there was a stage in 2007 where 
if the bullpen phone rang and I felt like it was a situation that I should have been in the game and I wasn't in the game, I would get pissed off. Yes. And I searched for that feeling for the rest of my career. I never had that confidence that I had in 2007 again. I managed to have some good years, don't get me wrong, yes. but the confidence that I had in 2007, I don't think I'll ever, I'll ever find again. But um, that's part of, part of the adjustment as well is, is learning, learning how to pitch when you don't have your best stuff, learning how to pitch when you don't feel the best, learning how to pitch when you're not confident. Uh, you know, you might have had three appearances against a guy and he's taken you deep three times, but next time yes. you face him, you, you've, got to, you've got to do it again. There's no escape. There's no, there's no shot clock to run out. There's no, there's no game clock to run down. It's, it's you've got to play nine innings and that's it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's right. And, and uh, in that time, who, who were you sort of, uh, sort of close to? Who were you like rooming with? Who, who were you, you know, was it the guys in the bullpen, or were you just sort of happy to sort of be by yourself? The pen, the pen's a, a team amongst the team. Uh, yes. We have, we have, um, we have bullpen dinners, and we also have full team dinners but it's pretty tough to get 26 27 guys <laughs> into a right. restaurant at the same time so <laughs> yes. you, we usually try to we we will break off into our into our sections i guess um but we, we all try to hang out with everyone but you also see each other every day so um you, you don't you don't necessarily want to spend all day at the ballpark with these guys and then spend all night with them as well <laughs> so right. yeah and as far as roommates there's there's no roommates in the big leagues everybody gets their own yes. hotel room um so you know, there, there are some days where you wake up, you don't even know where you are because yes. it's just, it's on, it's honestly just three days in one city and then you're on a plane. Three days next city, you're on a plane. Three days next city, you're, you might go home for a week, then you're off again. And how, how, does, how does that all work, like with visas and passports and, you know, is it private jets? Is it, how, like, it's just they charter, crazy. They charter a plane. So unless we're going to right. Toronto, um, there's, no, there's no need for passports. And, yes, um, of course. I guess before before nine eleven, it used to be even better where they just roll up on a bus and not even have a security check. Whereas now, when I was there, the bus would pull up on the tarmac right alongside the plane. There'd be two security gates, uh, two security agents there, and they would run down the list of people getting on the plane. They would randomly pick six or seven people to get security tested, and then the rest of the guys just go straight up on the plane, and we head head to where we're going. So um, there'll be nights where you get in at five in the morning, you got to be at the field that day. Um, wow. It's, I mean, you still get to sleep in a great bed and you get to wake up, but the, yes. in AAA, there's there's times where you have to be up at four to get a 5 a.m. flight to go and play that day. So wow. there's no complaining yeah. about the big legs, mate. I can tell you that. Yeah, that's right. And, and the double headers and, you know, uh, rain delays and, you know, four or five hour games. And yeah. 162 games in 180 days. That's right. And then that doesn't include the the final, the playoffs, and the, no playoffs you know. <laughs> included that. Yeah, that's right. So, that's so when, when you they, get when yeah. you see guys or you see when you see teams that win the World Series and and struggle the next year, like the Nationals did this year, um, yes. I think that's such a deep long run into the playoffs. It's yes. it's extra stress for a month. It's yeah. twenty extra games that that people have to play that they're not used to. So you turn one hundred and sixty games into one hundred and eighty games. And the intensity of those last twenty uh, are tenfold of what the first hundred and sixty yes. were. So, um, you know that's why it's so hard to go back to back, and that's why it's so impressive for for teams that have won back to back World Series. And even the Royals in fourteen and fifteen, when they went to the World Series in fourteen and won it in fifteen, that yes. that kind of run is special. And that's that's why you see a lot of these teams try and do the rebuilding thing because they know that if you can get the right draft picks and get these guys. A core group of guys together to come up through the minor leagues, and and there's guys on that team that that all they did from A ball to AAA and the big leagues was win, 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 win. So it's like, it's it's insanity to me. It's 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 that's why there will always be a rebuilding team. Yes, yeah, absolutely. And that was a good run too. Uh, I'm not a Kansas City Royals fan, but uh, gee, that was a good run. They had a couple of good years there a couple of years ago. That was real fun to see the underdogs. they were a good team. They were a, a yeah. good team, a team team. And yes. it gets lost these days with all the analytics and the numbers and the data and the and the, you know, the team chemistry is a thing and 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 camaraderie and and you know, it's it's funny that a a good team of a bunch of good guys that 
that want to fight for each other can sometimes and, and more often than not beat the team of superstars. That's why the Yankees just can't buy playoffs every year anymore because That's it takes right. more than that. It takes more yeah. than just cash. And, uh, you know, you bring that up as well, like uh, with the Moneyball thing with how the athletics and they even made a movie out of it. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you were in that period as well, like yep. uh, Oakland A's, you know. They're still they doing tried. It. Yeah, They're still that's doing right. It. <laughs> Yeah, they, they they make the playoffs every year with with a, a tenth of the budget that some of the teams have. Yes. That's also that's also a point of contention because as players we feel like teams should have a minimum that they should have to spend because. Yeah. But why if they can get to the playoffs every year? That's, that's, that's so right. you, you know. And you, and you know what? It was really funny in that movie, and I don't know if it's really true, but. All the all the uh, the scouts were saying, oh, you know, he's a good looking player. He's a good looking guy. He's got a he's got a hot girlfriend. Um, you know, he can hit thirty home runs. Um, he should be on our club. Yeah, <laughs> I was like, what that the was the that was that was old school scouting. Look at his yeah. body. Look at look at the look at you know. It, whereas now it's 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 all changed. You know, yeah. um, it's they. I don't know if they have the the data capturing tools at high school. I know they do in college for sure. So, you know, scouts don't even need to go to games anymore. They still do, and there's still guys that still prefer to go and watch games. But, you know, a lot of these analytics departments just read numbers and, and make decisions based on that. Yeah, absolutely. And you had a you had a, a good career with the Braves, uh, you know, uh, 2008. But then... Uh, let's go through some of the injuries. <laughs> um, you know, of course, you, you're pitching uh, 70, you 80, 80, 80 <laughs> times a, a, you know, a season. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm just looking here and, uh, you know, uh, some people in that don't follow baseball, a Tommy John surgery, I mean, that's something that's not, <laughs> you can't just walk out next week and start throwing again. So uh, torn rotator cuff, uh, back mm-hmm. injury, you know, mm-hmm. um, so, so, you know, you go just bashing my head baseball. against the wall all the time, it felt like. Yeah. But yeah. to come back, you know, yeah. how difficult is that to do that? I, I, I accept responsibility for a lot of those injuries. Uh, obviously, I got worn out early in my career. Um, but I managed to throw in 80 games when I was 40 years old with Kansas City. So right. I, I don't think it was the number of games. I think it was my inability to take care of myself or know what to do in order to get myself ready every day. I went from early on my career, I lifted a lot of weights and then and then mid, midway through the year, I stopped lifting weights and I did a lot of cardio instead and I did a lot of, um, you know, just heavy, heavy, heavy weights. Um, mm. I just tried all different things because every everyone's different. And then it turned out that the best thing for me was to just stay, stay nimble, stay loose, stay strong but not the, you know, the lift and grunt and weights. It was more <laughs> strength and stability and core and, and, and making sure that I was, I was getting proper treatment from the guys in the training room before the games, not just after the games when something didn't feel right. I did preventative stuff. I did, you know, it was um, – I, I really, really got lucky to get those last couple of years in Kansas City that I did. Um, so, nice. um, again, it was – after another injury, and I ended up signing a deal with the Braves to be a player coach uh, in their rookie ball. So, you know, yes. I, I, there were so many times where I could have just gone, yeah, you know, I've had enough. But while someone was willing to give me a check to play baseball, I was going to continue to play baseball. Yeah, absolutely. And, and what were some of the highlights uh, playing with the Braves? I mean, we talked earlier before like, uh, mm-hmm. before we started uh, that – I got a chance to meet you in the bullpen in yeah. in Miami at the old uh, Dolphin Stadium. Um, so, is there any sort of uh, highlights you know stand out you know with with the Braves? Yeah, personally, um, my first game, um, that first that first big moment, my first win, uh, you know yeah. those sorts of things that that sort of mean a lot. But um, just getting back to the big leagues in in, in this first place yeah. was was such a such a huge thing for me um and yes. having to do it over and over again there's been there's been a number of times where a lot of people have written me off um yes. 
and rightfully so. I mean, how many times can you watch a guy break down from injury and expect him to come back and be just as effective as he was before? But somehow so tell me, I managed Pete, to do it. So, yeah. so, Peter, sorry, tell me, how, how do you, how have you dealt with that? You know, you've been in the major leagues for such a long time. How do you deal with the media and, you know? You just shut it. I mean, you shut it out. I'd be, I'd be lying if I said that I didn't read Twitter and I didn't, you know, look at comments and, and of but... But I, I, I also know that, that I'm doing whatever I can. I'm doing my very, very best to perform every time I go out there. If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen. I, yes. I, I know I've done everything I can to prepare myself to get the result. And, and I know that whoever's writing the message to me on Twitter doesn't know the ins and outs of what I've been through. They're just saying yes, shit course. on Twitter because they're an egg on a social media website that has <laughs> no right. repercussions. I guarantee if that person was standing in front of me, they wouldn't say that to me. So yeah, of um, course. <laughs> you, you don't, you just, you just read what it is and it is what it is. It's just yeah. social media in a nutshell. Um, but just, I just, um, yeah, you just, you just ignore that. But as uh, my, my, as I said to you, my, my mindset was, was never to, never to, to, uh, and it started early because I remember um, I didn't make an under 13 state team and <laughs> The coach told my mum that I'd never amount to anything on the baseball field. There you go. How about that? So There's from that motivation point, for you. From that point, I've always <laughs> used other people's shit talking as a motivation for myself. Yeah. Yes. I remember that too. I had something similar as well. I didn't have a growth spurt until a little bit later on. Right. And, and my baseball coach at the time, I uh, was like maybe 14 or 15, and he just said, you're too small, Craig. You're not gonna. You're not gonna get in the team. And ever Tell since that time, bang, bang, bang. Next season, I, I had a growth spurt, and I made the team. Whatever you know. <laughs> so Just think you about go. the amount of people that that were told that in the early. Because nowadays, you can be anyone and anything, and do anything and anything you want. So it's. I feel like we're in a, we're in a society now where, you know, there's a lot of opportunities for for a little. A, there's obviously some people that have those opportunities, but in general there are a lot of opportunities for people so uh back in the day you were looked at as too small and you were just shunned you were not sorry you're never gonna make it you're never gonna you're never gonna do anything so, um, mugsy bogues comes to mind you know talking about spud webb these tiny guys that played in the nba that that i'm sure were just like you're too small you're too small too yes. small so um yeah i, I just think the and anybody gets a chance these days. I think if you can if you can play and you can prove that you can play, it's not about size anymore. It's all or strength or or any of that sort of stuff that the old school stuff that it used to be. It's more about one, what you can do. The one guy that stands out is that uh, Jose Altuve for mm. uh, Houston. He's hitting 20, 25 home runs, and he's he's just a little little guy. So you know. Um, and it sucks what's go. happened to the to him and the Astros because he was such a good player before all that stuff went down. Um, yeah. So I just think it's it's going to tarnish what legacy he will have. And um, I think it waned. I think it wore on him this year too. Like he yeah. he did not have the year that he had. And people are going to put it down to the fact that you know he was cheating. But I know that 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 was just a mental grind for him. Talk about trying to trying to not listen to what people are saying online. I mean, it's online, it's offline, it's constant for those guys this year. Yeah. But I just think that uh, it wasn't the time, you know, I mean, Houston got caught, but mm. surely for years people have been trying to um, get signs get from the other team, you know yep. what I mean? So Yeah. But that's just getting signs different... from the other team and, you know, looking right when you think it's going to come inside or looking left when you think it's going <laughs> to go outside and actually bashing a trash can to tell you what's coming. <laughs> That's right. That's yeah, another that's, level. That's going a little bit overboard. Exactly. So, so Peter, you, you played with. Uh, it says here that you played with the Braves until 2012, and then you signed uh, with the Los Angeles Dodgers in, I did. in 2013. So, mm -hmm. uh, tell us that experience um, going to La La Land from from Atlanta. I think you'd notice that they've won they've won eight division titles since I was there. Too, That's so. right. <laughs> yes, I'd, I'd like to think. Some people say it was when Puig got there, but I like to think it was when I got there. It was the two months <laughs> that I spent with the Dodgers that really turned the franchise around. <laughs> there you go. Um, no, the Dod look, that that was. I'd come back from shoulder surgery. I, again, wasn't a hundred percent. Spent spent a lot 
more time in AAA than I did in, in the big leagues that year. Um, and that was sort of the start of the decline where I thought I was, you know, this might be the end of me. Um, so I was in LA, staying in a hotel. I spent 187 consecutive nights in a hotel that year because I couldn't commit to, to getting an apartment anywhere because I was going up and down so much. Um, so I stayed at the, uh, the Marriott by the airport in Albuquerque, New Mexico when I was in AAA. And I stayed at the Western downtown when I was in LA and I'd just pack, I had two suitcases. I had one that I'd take on the road with me and I'd had one that I'd leave in the car. And it was just, it, that was, that was just a grind. That was a grind year. And then Simon so Houston the next year and I blow out in spring training. So that's when I thought, okay, yeah. this might be it. And that's when 15, I have to sign that player coach deal. Um, yeah. but, but lucky so for me, back with, the Braves in 2000, back with the Braves in 2015 and then uh, Kansas City. Uh, Loved Kansas City, by the way. Loved Kansas City. Yeah, Everything yeah. about Kansas City, I absolutely adored. It would have, would have been a bit of a, a total change, like with the whole way that they, they play baseball. They um, they just won the World to... Series the year before. Yeah. So they they yeah. were they were riding high. Um, yes. They still had the same team that the basically the same team they had the year before. So um, it, it was a fun team to be on it was a fun town to be in they respect baseball they respect the other team kind of like st louis where they're educated fans they know the game they know when to cheer they don't have to be prompted by a scoreboard to cheer all the time yes. um so um you know it's it's it was a fun fun city my wife and yes. i really really enjoyed our time in kansas city yeah that's great and then it says here that you played you had your last season in 2018 back with the braves was it Back with the Braves, yeah, that was a. It oh was so a. Who, who, who was who, who was pushing to come for you to come back to Atlanta? Me, I pushed every oh. every year I wanted to sign in Atlanta. <laughs> I wanted to. I lived there. My house is there. You know, it's so right. much easier to be able to drive after the after yes. the play game than having to go to someone else's house that you're renting. So, yes. um, I, I I wanted to finish my career. Alex Anthopoulos was the GM. I wanted to oh. finish it better than what I did, but I guess. Lucky for the Braves, I didn't have that good a year because I would have tried to pitch again last year. But, um, I, you know, it was, it was just a struggle. I felt like I don't know whether it was, it was the way that people's swing paths had changed. Um, you know, you, they talk about elevating the ball now and, and uppercut swings and, and launch angle and that sort of stuff. So I don't know what the deck – maybe it was just my sinker wasn't as good as it was in years past, but – um, I, I just got hit so hard in 18. Um, you, on paper, it doesn't, it, it doesn't look too bad, but I know that, that 18 was just not my year. And it, it, that, was, that was time for me to maybe, maybe walk away. The, the game itself had outgrown me as my style of pitching. There are still guys out there that are able to do it, um, mm. like a, a, a Darren O'Day, but yes. he has the ability to get left-handed hitters out, whereas I – struggled mightily with left-handed hitters throughout my career um and i think a lot of it has to do with just opportunity um my first my first couple of years i, I was okay against left-handed hitters but then as i went into more of a platoony right-handed specialist role with erico flaherty as the lefty yes. um you know i i would Good only picture. really see right-handed hitters so yeah. um I got so used to it and I felt so comfortable facing righties that when a lefty stepped in there, it was just a completely different mindset. So, um, yeah, 2018 was was not my fondest, but I still had a really good time um, being around the game. And, and now, yes. luckily, I get to – I get to, and without all the pressure. Yeah. And, and I, I remember seeing videos uh, that year that you played and – uh, you know, you just seem to be a, a real good club clubman as well, like, like being a part of the clubhouse. And um, you were introducing, uh, I remember when Acuna Jr. came in, you were the guy that, you know, uh, welcomed him into the clubhouse. Uh, so, mm. you know what I mean? Uh, just, just little things like that. And so looking back on your career now, um, you know, how difficult was it to just sort of, sort of like, this is enough, you know? Sometimes difficult? those decisions get made for you. So yes, yes, um, true. I I had every intention of, of playing again last year or the year before, whenever it was. I've lost track of years yes. now. But um, <laughs> when I I think I, I if I had pushed and waited, 
I probably may have got an opportunity because a lot of guys were went into spring training, got got injured that year, and there was a lot of guys mm. signing late, even guys signing into the season for an opportunity to pitch. But it got to around the start of March, and I hadn't really had any offers, and and I I just got to the point where I was like, maybe it's time, maybe it's time for me to to do this, and I decided to go over to Europe. Well, I, t- I tell you what, uh, the way that the, the bullpen for Atlanta, you, well, the way you left it this last year and this year is even better. Yeah, um, crazy. One of the best crazy bullpens good. In, in, in the, not just the National League, but the the Major League Baseball. So um, that's that's a good thing. It reminds me of the of the Royals, and I hate to keep bringing the Royals up, but you look yes. at the Royals in 14 and 15, and they would shorten games with four closers. Seven, eight, and nine. <laughs> gone. Six, seven, eight, yeah. nine in some Six, cases. Six, seven, eight, yeah. nine, yes. Yeah. 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 And and the guys that would come in even before that were, were not any – weren't slouches. That's um, yeah, I think it was – I think Hochaver was one of the guys that would come in in the fifth or sixth inning. So, um, yeah, it's – the game has, has really turned into – bullpens and um, a lot of the purists and a lot of the old guard are, are sort of pushing back a little bit now. I don't know if you've been reading any yes. articles about, especially yes. after the decisions made by the Rays in the World Series, yes. um, you know, that that is going to start to trigger, I think, a shift, not so much away from analytics, because analytics and the information is always going to be there and it's so necessary for the development of our game. But you can't take instincts and the eye test out of the game. And I think yeah. that's the frustrating part. And that's what fans get frustrated at is that they know what the numbers are. And they know what, what – I think a lot of the times these moves are made so they can justify it in the media. And yes. that shouldn't be the way that we play our game. If you have yes. someone who's managing a team and has the power to make decisions, let them make the decisions. Let yes. them make the decisions based on their what they're thinking, what they're seeing, what what they are reading, and all of it. Not just this says this. I've got to do this now. I've got to take Blake, Sel- Blake Snell out now because this is my like. No, you don't. There is nothing that says you need to take anybody out of this game yes. right now. Don't do it. And it they pay for it by losing the World Series. That's right. Yeah, that's a huge risk. <laughs> but yeah. he can. But even that, that was such a strange move because when he brought Anderson in after he brought Snell out, Anderson had given up runs in four out of his last five games or six out of the last seven games or something like that. So it wasn't like he was lights out. It wasn't like you were, yes, yes, he had been your best reliever for the last 18 months, but no, he wasn't your best reliever in this playoffs. And you can't just keep going back to the well. It's going to run out. Agreed. Agreed. Absolutely. And and then you you, were, you said before uh, that uh, after the major leagues uh, you had a season in uh, Europe. Yes, I so, did. So tell us tell us about that <laughs> that whole experience. The the further away I get from that, the more I realise that I was just running away from retirement. Um, I just I just didn't <laughs> want to accept the fact away? that I wasn't. Yeah, I, I just didn't want to. Yeah. I didn't want to accept the fact that I wasn't going to play baseball anymore. So I decided to go somewhere where I would be accepted, and I knew that I'd make the team, and that was Czech Republic. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I had a buddy of mine that was a pitching coach for the team over there, and I, and I just out of the blue, I sent him a message. I said, "Listen, do you need any pitching this year?" And he was like, "Let me get onto it. Let me see what I can do." So there was obviously no money in it. It was just more yeah. the experience to go over there and and take my family to Europe. We'd never been to Europe before, um, so we got to go to Europe. We got to travel around Europe and and make some some cool little trips. And um, it, I would definitely go back. Um, but yes. yeah, I think now that I've now that I've accepted my role as a TV guy and a coach, yes. I think I can I think I can um, I can say that I'm retired. Officially. And then you, you and then you come back to Atlanta to be on a part of the uh, let me see here Fox Sports South mm-hmm. yeah. as a, like an analyst for the pregame and the postgame show. Exactly right. So um, yeah, they approached me basically once I retired. They approached me and said, "Would you be interested in doing TV?" And uh, initially, I thought, <laughs> "Okay, I'll, I'll give it Australia, a go." Um, Australian accent, right? Hi, exactly. Mate. <laughs> and they love it. They, it's, yeah. it's it's something different. And I I do know the game, so it's not like I'm just yeah. spouting BS. Um, but yeah, it's I, my, my first ever my first ever appearance on TV. I go to the production meeting at four o'clock. We're supposed to be on air at 6.30. They run through the sheet of what we're going to talk about. I'm like, okay, cool. 
Anything else? No, nope, that's it. I was like, okay. And then I get on set and I'm sitting there and I have an earpiece in my earpiece. And we're supposed to be talking with Chip Carey, Tom Glavin and, and Jeff Francoeur. And I lose sound as we go live. I've got no sound in my ear, so I can't hear what they're saying to me. So I'm sitting there with a microphone and a stupid big teeth smile on my face. like, And they're talking to me and I'm just like, so that wasn't that wasn't the best debut, and I thought it was a rookie hazing. I thought the sound department decided to haze me on my first day yeah. and to see how I'd handle it. But yeah, it's yeah. talk about stressful. You are live, at the live. I can't stress yeah. that enough. There is no swear button. There's no cough button. There's no nothing. It is 100% live. So wow. that was that's been a learning curve in itself. Uh, but I've and they gave, thoroughly they gave you a second chance as well after that I with have. the yeah <laughs> surprising right. Great experience, and then, and then just just quickly um, yeah. talking to all these I'm in no rush. huge I've got stars, no Chip Carey, uh, mm. Tommy Glavin, one of my favourite players. Um, yeah. You know, Chipper Jones is a part of it as well. So, what's yeah. it like talking with these guys, playing with these guys? You know, well, they're my friends now, Craig. Yes, they're, I consider these people friends. So um, it's just like hanging out with friends, um, yeah. but we, we do it live on television. <laughs> and, we're, and, and we're not and we're not quite allowed to swear at each other like we do when we're not on the air <laughs> not on the air maybe after <laughs> after we give each other heaps yeah don't worry about that don't worry yeah. about that no it's 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 still i pinch myself that i've still to this day managed to to get as many years as i did as the and that was you talk about goals and and mindsets and and that was once i got through that first year my whole goal was to not be that dude from the WBC. Brand. I wanted to be known as Peter Moyle, the baseball player. So, and I think I've done a good enough job at, at. Most people don't know my story, so that's that's nice that I get to I get to tell people, and they say, "Oh, that's that's great how it all started." Um, so, I've gone from being the pharmaceutical rep that, that went to MLB to actually just an MLB player. Wow, that's amazing! And now you said you're back here um, to support the you know, uh, to be a part of the, is it called, still called the Claxton Shield? No, it's uh, the ABL. Match. It's gone back to the ABL. ABL? ABL? Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So tell us about, um, you know, how it is and, and what, what's the future for, you know, uh, baseball in Australia? I think it's, I think it's, um, last year was a real, um, it's, it was an eye-opening experience for me because it was, it wasn't just the typical Melbourne baseball crowd that would come to a baseball game. I felt like there was a lot of people from other areas that weren't necessarily fans of the game before they came to to watch us play. And we played some really good games at, at, at our home ballpark last year. So there was a lot of excitement around our team. Uh, and, and when we won the championship, it was just... We got to play one game at home against against Adelaide, and then we... Uh, or two games. We lost one, we won one. Then we went to Adelaide to play the third game. We ended up winning that. So... Um, but to play in front of a home crowd that that was so passionate and loud and 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 I think I think the more the more we can get that kind of exposure and more fun around the game. Um, if you've been to a minor league baseball game, it's it's not just the product on the field. It's it's generating excitement in between innings and keeping people in, engaged and and having kids run on the base paths and and you know having kids sign autographs up getting their autograph signs afterwards. It's it's just, it's, there's just so much that we could be doing to, to develop the game. And, and I still want to be a huge part of it in this country. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I was lucky enough uh, two years ago to go to Japan and I, I saw a couple of games over there. It's just amazing, the really? atmosphere. And, the, and then uh, last year I went to South Korea and uh, what, okay. watched some baseball there as well. And just they're so passionate the crowds yeah. it's like i could only imagine if that was that was to happen in australia maybe one day <laughs> no, i hope so uh, well if, and if you get a chance i I'd, I'd really um think you should go check out a winter league game in the caribbean or the right. caribbean series or or one of those games where you get you know guys from dominican and venezuela and, and mexico and, and puerto rico just more than just the world world baseball classic because it's they're all the superstars and and you know they're obviously going to play well but it's it's yeah. these winter league teams that are that are, are no name guys that are just so passionate so loud and the yeah. fans are just they're insane they are insane yeah. <laughs> all right that's on my list 
post COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right, Peter. So uh, let's get close to wrapping it up here. So um, it's my standard question. What does the future hold for Peter Mullen? I wish I could tell you. Um, Post-COVID. I, I obviously <laughs> have... Uh, yeah, I have, I have, I have plans. Um, I don't know whether it's going to be... It can go two ways as of right now. I, I don't know if it's, it's going to be... Just continue to do the, the TV thing in the States and come home and do this in the off season. Um, yeah. I'm always going to come back home. That's, that's never going to be in doubt. Um, but there also is a chance that, that I might make the move permanently to come back home. Uh, my green card runs out in 2025. Right. Um, I've lived in the States now on and off really for, but basically on the whole time since 2006. Um, and, uh, as much as there's not the baseball opportunities that there would be in the States, I feel like there's enough here yeah. To warrant me potentially moving back and, and trying to trying to do whatever I can to to get more bums in seats to to watch watch guys and, and get more guys opportunities in the states too. Yes. Um, there are there are plenty of colleges that are looking for for, for talent and uh, as you said post COVID um, there's there's going to be a lot of, and and we're seeing with the fact that minor league baseball isn't isn't they're gonna they're gonna cut. 40 teams from minor league baseball this year. Um, and with this shortened season this year, there's a lot of teams that, that are sending players out for the ABL this year. So when you have guys like Ronald Acuna come out and have the success that he had here and, and basically skyrocket to the big leagues after he played in Australia, yes. um, you know, that's, that's the kind of result that we want. And that's the kind of thing that we need clubs seeing. And it's not minor league baseball when you come over here because there is that want to win. Whereas yeah. a lot of the times in the minor leagues, you're just basically there as development and you know that you're there as development and there's, you, know, you don't want, you're not playing for the team across the front. It's just, you're just <laughs> there as a number trying to get your stats yeah. up so you can go to the next level. Back in the majors, yeah. Right. So whereas over here, there's that team feel, there's, there's a goal, there's no going up or down. It's you, you are who you are and the team is what it is and you just go out there and fight. So changes yeah. their mindset as a player to get in that environment and see what it's like. And it gives them a taste of what it would be like in the big leagues when you actually have to win. Yeah, absolutely. Great answer, Peter. And uh, <laughs> good luck with that. <laughs> so tell us, um, where, where can we find you on social media? And, and is there any, any sort of uh, promotion that you want to sort of uh, give a shout out to? Uh, I've got nothing really going on right now. I'd love a shout out to anybody who wants to send gifts to the, uh, to the Hilton Hotel in Sydney. I am, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Um, no, I'm some decent uh, I'm, food. <laughs> I'm at Twitter. I'm at Twitter at, at Peter Moylan, I think, and I think my uh, Instagram's the same thing. Um, yeah, but I, I love to get on Twitter and uh, and banter with with the fans and 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 hit it hit back at a few people that that uh, I, I, I it's, it's the keyboard, a lot of what, the keyboard I, warriors, I, right? <laughs> I become a keyboard warrior all the time. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah, but. Uh, not, not nothing to promote just yet, but if I do, I'll make sure we I, I come back on and we have another chat. Not a problem, not a problem. And uh, so to finish off now, I just uh, ask a couple of questions, get to know you a little bit more uh, off the topic of baseball. Maybe not, but, yeah. but um, your top two or three all time favorite. All right. So are you ready? Let's, yeah, let's do this. So getting off the topic of baseball, so uh, who are your top three favorite musicians or art artists, musical artists? Ooh, good one. Um, ACDC would be probably up there for a lot of reasons. Um, mm -hmm. Man, you, I have to give three. Yeah, two or three. Okay. I what what song did you come out to when you, you were playing baseball? AC was it TNT or Hell's Bells? TNT. TNT. Yes. TNT. <laughs> so I did that when I first when I first got called up. I came out to Men at Work, like every single Australian does. Yes. Uh, and then eventually I got to choose my own song, so I went with TNT, and, and that lasted actually, my whole career. Actually, I have some footage on my um, it's on on a USB somewhere of you coming out uh, at Turner Field. Uh, to TNT, um, and I was late recording it, like on my phone. No you know, way! Just, yeah, so there you go. So I'll have I'd to love send to that see that because I don't get yeah. I don't get to see it from that perspective. I just get to see it from yeah. me, you know, floating from the bullpen to the mound, trying not to try not to give up runs. 
I'll uh, send it through to you. Bands. Justin yep, yep. Timberlake, um, Pharrell. Uh, I, my music genres span. I literally just hit random. Chris Stapleton. Nice. Um, so, mate, you name it. If it's if it sounds good and it's got a beat, I'm probably going to listen to it. That's always a good thing. Now, yeah. actress, actors, actresses. Uh, do you have your uh, top two or three actresses, or and then also uh, two, two or your three top favorite movies? Okay, uh, I would go probably. <laughs> this is going to sound with you. Tom Hanks is probably yes. my number one. Uh, I would watch anything and everything. Morgan Freeman, oh, uh, and <laughs> Jack Black. Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> and movies. Oof. Shawshank has always been number one, but I feel like that's everybody's yes. answer. So I'm, I'm going to go a little bit left field and go with. I've seen so much. I think I've clocked Netflix with the amount of time that I've had on my hands. So <laughs> I've seen, I've seen, I'm going to go old school. Um, old school. I like oh. those, I like those 2000, 2000 yeah. comedies that came out, you know, the yeah, Step Brothers, yeah. Wedding Crashes, old school. <laughs> that run that they had was just uh, really good. So hilarious. I'll put that as one, as one category. Mm. Um, yes. I love documentaries. Right. So I've really died. Have you seen Icarus? No. It's the one about the Russian Winter Olympic scandal, the Winter Olympic yeah, right. the, the doping scandal. The doping one. Right. Phenomenal, right? So <laughs> any documentary I'll watch. Um, and uh, okay, that's enough. Move on. Now, now um, overseas destinations besides the US and Amsterdam. Australia. Amsterdam. 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 Yep. Amsterdam would be number one. Hong Kong might be number two. Nice. Um, and Bali. Bali, come on. Your top three, top three uh, sporting teams. Could be any any, any Atlanta, sport. Atlanta Braves. Yes. Uh, uh, the Hawthorne Football Club of Hawthorne, Victoria. Yes. And the New Orleans Saints. Right. Uh, who are the <clears throat> two or three um, of your all-time, you know, players that you played with? You know, all-time favorite players you played with. Okay. Um, this isn't necessarily studs. This is just people. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Chris Medlin. Oh, can I? I'm gonna have to. I'm just gonna run through a list. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure. I can't just do three. Chris Medlin, Eric O'Flaherty, Martin Prado, Eric Hosmer, Mike Moustakis, uh, Whit Merrifield. I mean, there is just Chipper, Glavin. Uh, uh, I'm, you're better off getting the list of the people that I didn't enjoy playing with because there's only been two <laughs> and I will never give it to you. I will never give you the list, but there's been Thank two you. guys that I that I, I absolutely would not cross the street to to you know what on if they were on fire. Did you um, throw at them? No, they Did were actually him? teammates. Oh, teammates! Right. Yes, <laughs> so that was not well, something that, that I could do. <laughs> yeah, good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, uh, give us a couple of players you know that you played against. Wow, that's huge. Um, yeah, um, I like to get bats signed of guys that I've had really good, um, intense, long battles with. Yeah. So Ryan Zimmerman is one of them. Right. Uh, um, I'm not sure if you remember opening day 2008, Washington Nationals Park. Ryan Zimmerman hit the walk off, walk -off home run. Opening day, open first <laughs> game at Nationals Park. Ryan Zimmerman, the poster child for the Nationals. I'm pitching, he hits a walk off off me. So Ryan Zimmerman is one of those guys. Uh, Matt Holiday, Matt Holiday was, was one of those guys. Um, Ian Kinsler 
was one of those yeah. guys that I really loved to go to battle with. Um, Peter, the final question, who, who is your biggest inspiration slash hero? Um, do I have to name one again? You can name I'm gonna a couple. Go, I'm going to go with my dad just because yes. my dad my dad tried to tried to get me on the straight and narrow as a 16 17 year old so that I didn't have to have the career that I had and wait 8 years and go back you know he he battled with me as a teenager to try and get me to see what I see now and yes. only now do I understand why and what he was doing and I guess um, I appreciate what he was trying to do back then and I've told him multiple times uh, so I guess he would be he would be up there uh, my mum also because of what she had to do to get me the opportunities to yes. play the things that I did she worked she was stacking shelves and woolies at night time to try and get me to go to these tournaments so you know oh. her my parents have been huge influence on me and I guess the other two baseball guys would be Don Kyle who was the director of the uh, West Australian Baseball Academy when I was a junior junior baseball guy, um, had a massive influence on me. And his son now is actually the manager for the Perth Heat. Oh, there you and go. the other guy would be Roger McDowell, who was my first pitching coach that I had, and Bobby oh, Cox, nice. my first manager that I had Bobby in the big Cox. leagues. So, um, oh, yeah, those those would probably be on my Mount Rush, Rushmore of, of influences. Yeah, wow. Yeah. They're pretty good. That's a, that's a pretty good way to end it, I think, Peter. All right. Um, thank you very much again for your time. Um, of course, man. Amazing career. Uh, it, you know, it just shows your determination, and you didn't give up that first time. Uh, you got to the top. You, you've done it. You've done it all in Major League Baseball. Mm. Good luck with uh, you know promoting Australian baseball. And I, and I too, you've lived my dream. <laughs> <laughs> Not only playing Major League Baseball, but playing with the Atlanta Braves. Uh, right. But. Uh, and all the best for the future. Thanks, mate. Really, 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 really good talking to you. I'm glad we finally got to do this.